today we want to take our time to talk about criminal justice in Nigeria. And to do that with us this morning is a legal practitioner, Kayade Ashade, and he's here with us this morning. Good morning and you're welcome. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you so much. Good morning. My pleasure. All right. So uh, first thing, we need to understand the idea of criminal justice in Nigeria. So please break, break it down. All right. For every society, there is a need to ensure stability, that there is no breakdown of law okay. and order. Um, the reason behind the society generally is a social contract. Mm -hmm. So there is a social contract theory saying that, you know what, let's all come together, but at some point, I submit some of my rights, you submit some, some of your rights. But while maintaining that submission, you don't infringe on my right. So in ensuring that things are balanced, we have a system. Now, two systems are created, the civil system and the criminal system. Some actions which either party, anyone in the community may occasion, may be deemed as a civil wrong against a fellow citizen or dweller, while some will be deemed as a criminal wrong, wrong. which has been proscribed by all. all right. A criminal wrong, which has been proscribed by all. So the criminal part is also is, is necessary to establish, to en ensure that there is a balance in the society and there is no breakdown of law and order. It is necessary for our you know, peaceful coexistence. Yes. yes. Now I'd like to know, is it every that warrants imprisonment. I was trying to give you an analogy before the show started, and I was saying, for instance, I steal a pen. It is um, seen as stealing, as, as it were, and uh, does that warrant me to go to prison? Okay, uh, the first thing we should note that the criminal justice system in Nigeria, and in most states in Nigeria, or in all the states in Nigeria, is um, set out in a way that it is correctional. A larger part of it is correctional in nature. Okay. So if, even when you consider imprisonment, imprisonment is also has some element of the correctional nature. All right. Okay. Yes. Because when you go to some a, a prisons, I've been to Ijebode prison, okay. you know, prison visits. Okay. Uh, and I've seen some of the facilities there. You have inmates who learn trade. Mm. You have inmates, actually, who go to school. Okay. In the prison? Yes, in the prison. You have inmates who, who do their work from the prison. Okay. Inmates who attend university from the in prison. In the prison, okay. Yes. Uh, I'm aware of, of that. Okay. So... Obviously, with this background, I know that the prison system ordinarily, the, the rationale behind it is for correction. Right. It's not just for punishment or incarceration as people, you know, term it. Term it. There's so, no extent to which you commit a crime and then you need to go to prison. No, 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 no. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. I, I, I've only established the fact that the the idea the idea the idea behind prison is to correct is to correct all right now for for offenses the 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 criminal code act or the criminal code laws of various states provides for punishment all right now there are some enactments or some laws okay. of states for example the road traffic act okay or the frc act provides for certain offenses. And in some instances, you will find that there is a term of imprisonment attached. In some instances, there is a fine. Term. Okay. Yes. Okay. In some instances also, there is forfeiture. Mm. Mm. The term imprisonment, you've, you've explained that it is not for punishment, as it were. It is for correction so that whomever or whoever goes into prison 
is going there to be reformed and rehabilitated. Yeah, yes, if I, if I may add also, in some instances and some extreme cases, All right. it is to prevent such a person from mingling with the public. Okay. Mm. It's for public safety. Okay. Mm. What are the cases that can actually throw you in prison? What are the categories? What should we be looking out for? You can go to prison even without being sentenced. Uh, you can we'll go to, to prison that. on remand. Okay. You understand? Yeah. Sorry. So Now, by way of sentencing, any offense that would take you to prison would either be an indictable offense okay. or a non-indictable offense. offense. Now, it's just a bit of semantics to say that there are some offenses that are small offenses. Mm -hmm. There are some offenses that are big, a bit big. Let me put it in the layman term. Mm. Now, small offenses are offenses that the maximum punishment is two years. Okay. Two years. You cannot punish the person more than two years yeah. imprisonment. Now, there are some offenses that are uh, indictable offenses. They, they have two years or above. Uh -oh. And there are some capital, maybe life. Mm. You understand? And there may be death by hanging or any of those. All right. Hello, good morning, Habibat. Good morning to your coffee. Hello, good How morning. Good morning. My name is Habibat from Kwara I have a question for the lawyer. All right. Okay, okay I would like to ask, what is the um, normal time or what is the standard dispensation of time between um, the time of an arrest and the time of um, the delivery of judgment? Because I can see that some people are arrested and they are arranged before the court of law and then it takes them two years, three years to deliver the judgment. And then these people are remanded in prison while the law process is going on. And what is the compensation from the government or from the judicial, judicial system when these people are eventually found innocent of the crime they claim they committed after spending close to two, three years in prison? Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, you very so much, everybody. Okay. All right. So uh, that's a very beautiful question. Mm -hmm. It's a very sad situation that we have in the country right now. Now, I have had a matter that the person was involved in a road traffic accident. All right. So the person was remanded in custody because of the nature of people died. Mm. But either party will say, the person will say, it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. So as a lawyer, I have a duty to represent him and say, this is his case. It is not his fault. I was not there. All right. It's based on the story he told me. So it's not his fault. But he was remanded in prison custody for over four months. Oh, really? Yes. Now, based on that, we applied for bail okay. at the high court. And the courts looked at the you know, factors that we presented before the court. And the court granted bail. Okay. So he was released on bail. So I mean, in, some, in some situations, when the remand does not just last, you know, forever. In some, in some, in some situations, the remand will take longer. The courts will still deny bail in some situations. Mm -hmm. But there are some situations where you find yourself, a, God forbid, you know, a, a person finds himself in that remand situation. They are awaiting DPP's legal advice. Okay for, you know, years. I know, at least I've heard of instances whereby somebody's awaiting DPP's legal advice for 10 years. Wow. It's so sad. Yeah. Yes. 10 years. Without even being charged to court. Exactly. So that's where I'm going to. Now, because this person has not been charged to court, mm -hmm. there are some provisions that you might not be able to invoke. Mm. If it is a person who has been charged to court, and then the person is coming for trial from the prison and then the trial is taking longer than the pre period of the punishment itself yeah. that is prohib prohibited by the law okay. but this happens yes it, 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 a lawyer you know some sad situations the other party the defendant don't does not have a lawyer mm. well i believe that 
as a lawyer representing a party, a defendant, you have a duty to search the law to look for whatever safe heaven is provided for your client under the law. So in such a situation, you cannot try, somebody cannot stay in prison, coming from the prison, remand, yes. for a period longer than the period of punishment is, pro is prohibited by the law. Well, okay, so these things happen anyways. Like you just, you just gave us a story on somebody that has remained, that, that was, was, remanded. Remanded, was remanded for yes. 10 years. Yes. So what's no, in no, case? No, 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 the person has been awaiting DPP's legal advice for 10, for 10 years. years. Awaiting DPP's legal advice for 10 years. Yes. So now He's if, on bail, but he's still standing trial. Still okay. standing trial. So yes. He's, are still, they, are they, he's not even, sorry, because he's awaiting, he's still going to court. That's what I mean. So, okay. Now, if this person is charged to court, then what happens? So, um, when, when, when such matters get to court, the court evaluates the file. You see, this person has been in prison custody for longer than even the offense that you are charging him for. Why should I? He has already served whatever time he would serve. So, the court can, on that basis, say, let, let him, him go. go. You understand? Mm -hmm. But in some instances, if he has not served, if he has not been, if he's coming from home, that is, if he's on bail, All you right. understand? He's obviously, he's not, he's not incarcerated. Yes, he's not. Yes. So the trial would commence, and it will take, take its full oh, course. Of course. What most time we have case with the police, and we require that let's wait for our lawyer before I speak, before we speak, the police will not, <coughs> sorry, police will not yes. allow us to do that. Most, 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 most people will be tortured to make statements on duress. I will mm. make that statement on duress, and the police will use it against okay. either, either who or, or, or for that, that, did it, that did that. And it's always happened. And before you know it, the person will go to court and be saying different things, and it makes different statements. On, on point of arrest, what? What can be done? Yeah, I think oh. I got. Uh, oh, I think I okay. Got that. Yes. Thank you, Thank James. You so All right. So obviously, the, the, that's a very common case. Case also. So there's a there's a way you we remedy that. All right. Yes. Now the 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 way the laws are structured now is that it's even more difficult. There's a procedure that the police has to follow in respect of obtaining statements, confessional statements. Okay. There, I think there is a provision of the law that requires that, one, the constitution even guarantees that you have right to representative. Yes. Okay. You understand? So that one is a constitutionally guaranteed right. right. The ACJ uh, A, the Admission of Criminal Justice Act, Act okay. also provides that you know, your lawyer or your representative should be there. So, if the police deny you that right, you can challenge the admissib uh, admissibility mm. of that confessional statement in court. Mm. Now, if you are tortured to make a statement and you get to court, they seek to tender it, you can also challenge the admissibility yes of that statement, that it was not a statement that was willfully made, made by, you. by you. It was made under mm -hmm. duress. And then the courts will now conduct what they call trial within trial. But even now, the laws are now evolving to say that, oh, police, so if you are going to, or prosecution, if you are going to obtain a statement, let there be a CCTV. OK. Mm you understand? Yeah. So let there be a CCTV. Let his lawyer be present so that there will be no case of, oh, I was slapped or I was beaten or I was coerced or, before making my this, statement. My statement. Mm. You understand? Yes. Okay. So, or probably I was not provided an interpreter or something. But if there is, if you find yourself in that situation that uh, you did not make or you were coerced into making a statement, one, as a defendant, you have an obligation to make sure that you inform your lawyer in clear terms, in details, what actually transpired. Oh. Okay. 
Because at that point, if you are being represented by a lawyer, it is your lawyer that would object. Okay. Your counsel will object to the admissibility or the tendering of that statement, mm. saying that that statement was not made willfully. So then the court then conducts the trial within trial. trial. Yes. trial is taking longer than the pre period of the punishment itself, that is prohibited by the law.